a tithe or a tenth of all that you possess to me, God, for I belong to you, and you will belong to me as you observe that. The tithe really is mine. That's why uh, Pastor Boston, when he prays, does not say we give our tithes, we return to you, we pay our tithes. When you give 10% to God of every dollar you get, how much are you giving? Technically, nothing. nothing. How much are you returning? I give you a dollar, and I say 10 cents belongs to me, and I do some nice things for you, and you give me back my 10 cents, how much are you giving me? Nothing. You're repaying 10 cents. You give me 15 cents, because I'm a nice guy, you're paying back the 10 cents, and you're just giving me 5 cents extra for interest, or because you like me, or whatever. So, he gives a tenth to God. The name, verse 2, we said is King of Righteousness. It also, he's the King of Peace. Verse 3, we've already observed he has no father or mother as far as the genealogy is concerned. Uh, he does not have beginning of days nor end of life. So if he's a man, and the genealogy is just left out, the idea is he just appears on the scene, and he reminds us of the Son of God, who is here forever. Or he is the Son of God, demonstrating here that he is forever. He's a priest continually. Now, the Jews knew that the priests serving in Jerusalem were not forever. How long did they serve for? Anybody know? From age 20 to age 50. 30 years. That's all they had. So, if you've got a priest who's 49 years of age, uh, he's not going to be around too much longer, is he, as a priest. Our priest, Jesus Christ, is forever. Verse 4. Now, he's going to talk about how great Melchizedek is as compared to Abraham. And Abraham is the father of the Jews, right? Nobody is revered any more than he Moses is also greatly revered by them. But now consider how great this man, that's Melchizedek, was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. So we know how great and even superior Melchizedek is to Abraham, first of all, because Abraham tithed to him. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi... Now, Levi comes from Abraham, doesn't he? Remember our genealogy? Abraham had a son. His name was Isaac. Isaac had a son. His name was Jacob. Jacob had sons, and one of them was Levi. And from Levi come Aaron and Moses. And Aaron is chosen to be the first high priest. And from that tribe of Levi, down the line of Aaron, come all of the priests. Is Jesus greater, superior to those priests? That's our point here. We've got to find that out. So he says here in verse 4, how great Jesus was because, or Melchizedek, because Abraham gave him a tenth. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law. That is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. So the Levites receive the tithe. God set up the program whereby the Jews would bring 10% of all of their animals, 10% of their produce. If they couldn't lug it all the way down to Jerusalem, they had to then convert it into money and bring the money in. But 10% belonged to God. And God is saying... Levi received that 10%. Uh, the Levites were all of the workers in the tabernacle. There were thousands working to take care of the, the tabernacle. And so the tithe went to the Levites to maintain the tabernacle and the temple. They, in turn, would tithe 10% to the priests. And that's how the priests would live. And that's how the Levites would live. And the tithe went to the tribe of Levi. Well, verse 6, 
But he whose genealogy is not derived from them, Melchizedek, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. So Melchizedek was not from the line of Abraham and Levi and Aaron, but he received the tithe. He received the tithe about 500 years before Abraham was, or before the, the law was even imposed through Moses. So there was no operating tribe of Levi at that time. And here is this Melchizedek receiving the tithe. What is that all about? And secondly, we find that not only is he greater than Abraham as far as receiving the tithe, but he also blesses Abraham. That's important. Don't miss that. Mm -hmm. What is going on? We're talking with, about greater, meaning not superior. Jesus is superior to all. But we're talking about a position and a ministry. And so you go into a church, and you don't find the pastor coming and tithing to somebody in the third or fourth pew. And you don't find somebody in the seventh pew coming up and laying hands upon the pastor or the elders to bless them. That's usually their position. And so who is doing the blessing here is important. Abraham is not blessing Melchizedek. If Abraham laid hands on Melchizedek and said, may the Lord bless you and keep you and provide for you, that would indicate that Melchizedek was inferior, spiritually speaking, to Abraham. So you've got to watch and see who's paying the tithe to whom. Abraham is paying it to Melchizedek. Who's doing the blessing? The priest, the king, is blessing Abraham. Who was greater? Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Incidentally, king and priest together, that office was not held by anybody else. Later on, there were some kings who would try to take on the priestly role. The very first king of Israel was discounted by God and cast out as king because he chose to be a priest also. What was his name? Saul. Saul. Could not wait for the priest to come to offer the sacrifice as the Philistines were pressing in upon him. He got impatient with God and impatient with Samuel, so he decided to make the sacrifice himself. He was a king performing a priestly duty, and Samuel said, to obey is better than sacrifice. God has removed you from being king. Later on, a very godly king would also go in and he would offer a sacrifice as a priest. The priest told him to get out. He refused to do it. And immediately he was leprous. And he was removed from society for the rest of his life. What was his name? Uzziah. King Uzziah. King and priest, you're not allowed to be both. But Melchizedek was both, and Jesus Christ is both, and so is Jerry Lynn. Whoa. Now either I've been too high on something, or I've gotten a little bit past Hebrews back into Revelation. And I want to show you how great our God is and how privileged you and I are, because in Revelation chapter 1, Verse 6, talking about Jesus Christ, he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. What an incredible privilege that you and I in Christ are kings and priests, not just in the future, but right now. That's our position in Christ. Or even in Melchizedek, if you want to use that. Let's go back to our text. I don't want to get too far afield, but I get excited about being a king and a priest, I'll tell you. And when I get up to heaven and see Uzziah, who I'm sure is healed by now, he's going to say, Jerry, lucky you. I tried to do what you were doing, and I got leprosy. How blessed you were to be in the age of grace. And... Um, David as well. David didn't try to really offer sacrifices, but he couldn't. King David, as powerful as he was, he could not offer one sacrifice as a priest. 
You and I can do that by offering the sacrifices of praise unto our God. Amen? Amen. All right, now let's look at verse 7. We saw that, again, that Melchizedek received a tithe from Abraham, and then he blessed Abraham. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better, or the higher position. And so that's the evidence there that Melchizedek has a higher position than Abraham. Verse 8, here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. That is critical, verse 8 right there. Here mortal men. He's talking at that time about the Levites. He can be talking today about this church and other places receiving tithes. But what does he mean? Here mortal men receive tithes. That's human beings. But there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. Who is he? He is the subject of his discussion, Melchizedek. But now you're looking at that earlier phrase without beginning and end. And he's receiving them, and that's a position for the high priest, and that's a position for God. Who is up there in heaven? Is that Melchizedek, separate from Jesus? How many of you have a little trouble getting your head around the Trinity? I do. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Don't put a fourth one on me, the famous quartet up there. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who sings bass but Melchizedek. No, that's... We're talking, that's proof to me who Melchizedek really is. That's Jesus who's receiving the tithe. Nobody else is qualified to do it. So, here mortal men receive tithes. Our elders will take this back and count it and use it as God directs. But there, he receives them. When you tithed this morning, if you did, we received it as mortal people, but Jesus is the ultimate one that you tithed to. And this witness is that he lives. The fact that he's there. Jesus told us in Matthew to continue tithing. He said to the Pharisees, oh, you've got the tithing down right. But you're kind of forgetting some things like mercy and love. I want you to add the mercy and the love and I want you to continue the tithing. And we see here, obviously, that Jesus is still receiving that tithe and still wants it to be given. And then he goes on to say in verse 9, even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak. So now he's going to make another point. I'll show you that Jesus is greater than Levi, 